doing great, doing great. You're not getting the feedback, are you? No, no. All right, then. Well, it's uh, a couple of minutes before, whenever you get ready, you, you go ahead and open up. Reverend Faison's here in the house, so. Uh, okay. Yeah. All good. All right, well, I know it's red. It's, I got red at 10 o'clock, so I say good morning to St. Stephen and Anderson Chapel. We're going to go and open up with our Sunday school this morning. We get Mother Barnes to lead us in a song this morning, and Reverend Faison to do a prayer. First, before we get into that, I like to know if um, our secretary is on this morning. Minister, how is it? Are you on this morning? If not, could I, could I get Mother Lewis to do the minutes for us this morning, if she don't mind? Yeah. All right. Yes, Thank you very much this morning. Mother Bonds, we can go open up with your song this morning. Thank 
Hello? I don't hear nobody but you and I, Mother Ball. Hey, that's a blip. The free conference call is okay. Obviously, something going on in the church. He'll probably realize yeah, in a few uh -huh. minutes. So, y'all just hold on. Hey, you brother dancing. Good morning. Deacon. Yeah. If I were you, I will see his um trustee Nancy on and let her go ahead and get started. Yes. Then if trustee Wooden, are you on this morning? Yeah, I'm sure am. Okay, well I well I know that, that I asked Brother Faith to do a prayer, but I can do a short prayer before we get started this morning. Because we don't know what's going on in the church. Okay. I'm she did, she did a prayer. Huh? She did a prayer. She laid down. She laid down a prayer this morning, but the internet dropped. So okay. she did a prayer. Okay. So and she did. She did a prayer. So yeah. Uh, okay. We were back time, but we didn't figure out what it was. But we figured something was going on in church. Okay. So let's start with uh, Trustee Wood. You gonna open up with something? A lesson this morning. All right. Good morning. <laughs> Our lesson for today, our lesson for today is from Matthew twelve twenty-two to thirty-two, and the subject is a demonstration of power. Now we as humans, we suffer from all kinds of affliction. We want to be delivered and made whole, but and we can look to Jesus because He has all power. Our lesson starts off with a demonstration of His healing power. And it says in verse 22, it says that then a demon possessed man, both blind and unable to talk, was brought to Jesus. And Jesus healed him so that he could both speak and talk. <laughs> see, I'm sorry, speak and see. And, and the crowd was so amazed and said, can this be the son of David? You reckon that, it, that him? And then he said, but when the Pharisee heard about this miracle, they said, he can only do this because of Beelzebub, the ruler of devils. Knowing that they, knowing what they were thinking, Jesus said, a divided kingdom ends in ruin. It lays waste. A city or a home divided against each other cannot stand. And if Satan is casting out Satan, he's fighting himself and destroying his own kingdom. And, as, <clears throat> and he said, and if as you claim, you say I'm casting out demons by the power of Satan, then what power do your people use when they cast them out? Let them answer their own accusation. But if I'm casting out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has arrived among you. How can one enter a strong man home and rob him except he first bind the strong man? If you are not with me, you're against me. If you don't gather with me, you scatter the Lord. <laughs> there is nothing done or said that cannot be forgiven. 
all men of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men except one, speaking against the Holy Ghost. And then that last verse, Jesus said, even speaking against me can be forgiven, but speaking against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this world or in the world to come. And as we look at some of the things that this uh, <clears throat> in, in this lesson, the, at the beginning of this chapter, Jesus had already been accused of breaking the Sabbath law by eating grain and healing a man with a withered hand. So they already were looking for something else to, to help destroy Jesus. And, you know, it seemed that some local Pharisees had heard about what they considered to be Jesus' disregard for the Sabbath law. And that bitterness overcame their need to be reasonable. The local group invited some Pharisees from Jerusalem to come to plot against Jesus as to how they might destroy him. And when, you know, when they brought this sick man to Jesus, it seemed that, seemed like Jesus healed him, the man in a quick response. And the people rejoiced at the miracle. They knew the man, they knew about him before, and they knew his illness. And here this man here is instantly healed. Where the Pharisees, they came to confront Jesus. They, they just wasn't, just couldn't believe it. They didn't want to believe. They didn't care. And the knowledge, <clears throat> the man, the, uh, they, he, they acknowledged that the man was restored. His condition was restored. But that was not an issue. They were boiling over with jealousy and fear and loss of faith. They accused Jesus of working for Satan. So um, they refused to acknowledge that the power to heal and cast out demons comes from God. They already, the Pharisees was already sitting their way and decided that's what they were going to do. And Jesus reminded the Pharisees, he said, any kingdom divided against itself, it just laid waste because it will it will deteriorate and, and be defeated even from the inside. And he said, now, now, you know, as we read back earlier in some of our earlier messages, Israel knew what it was like to be a united kingdom. And then they knew firsthand what it was like to be divided and conquered, then destroyed. You know, um, and a family who constantly augurs, father pities against son, mother pities against the daughter, all that, that cannot, I mean, groups against groups, it cannot stand. It would only fail. And because this is the work of Satan. And if Satan can't stop Satan, he's fighting himself. So Jesus had it, it Jesus turned it back, turned the argument right back on the Pharisees. And, and, and he says, uh, he turned the argument against them, said, and he, as he connects with them to the, <clears throat> I'm sorry, as he connects them to their being used by Satan, they, they want to say they would not give God the credit, they would not give the Holy Spirit the credit for this man's healing and well-being. Uh-uh. They said, say that Jesus is working for the answer which is the prince of devil. <clears throat> Jesus said, well, uh, <clears throat> your sons cast them out. They say the Pharisee claimed that Jesus' working, work of casting out the demons is done in the power of Satan. And he said, well, your folks cast them out. What power do they use? And, and he said, so ask them. Say, uh, ask them where their power comes from. Well, the Pharisee wasn't prepared for that. And <clears throat> they could not uh <clears throat> they could not answer without condemning their own self, which proved they were wrong about the store of power. And and you know, um <clears throat> Jesus Jesus said to him, said, No, it's not the Ezebel who's casting out the demon. His response was swift and intense because these Pharisees, they did not wish to acknowledge that Jesus is the Messiah and have the authority and the power to do away with the demons 
who had told me this man. He was the will <clears throat> he had the will of the Father to perform miracles. They knew Jesus had something they didn't have. But they could not and they could not stand it. They were jealous because Jesus was just messing up things for them. He gave Jesus gave that example. He said, Now listen, said, Can you break into a strong man's house and rob him without first biting the man? He said, one cannot rob Satan's kingdom without first binding Satan. Satan's will cannot overcome God's power. He said, since Jesus had been granted authority to cast out demons, you know, he's proven he's greater than Satan. He's able to go into Satan's territory and come out with victory. And this makes him able to establish the kingdom of God among them. Now, <clears throat> If he was driving out demons by Satan's power, he certainly would not be offering the people God's kingdom. And, and we, uh, <clears throat> and Jesus said, now, this is war. He told them, and he said, now, this is war. There's no middle ground, no neutral ground. If you're not on my side, you are the enemy. If you're not helping, you're making things worse. And Jesus talked to the people about sin and forgiveness. He told them, said that blasphemy against anyone except the Holy Spirit can be forgiven. And you know, when in the Bible dictionary, when we look at the word blasphemy, it says the act of cursing, flattering, reviling, or showing contempt or lack of reverence for God. And taking his name, and the old folks used to say, taking his name in vain. <clears throat> God will forgive, he's, God will forgive the evil things that people do to one another. He also wouldn't forgive the evil thing they say against him. But when people speak against the Holy Spirit, it's like sawing off the branch you're sitting on, cutting off all connection with the one who forgives. The Pharisees hated Jesus. He was righteous, and he could see in their heart. They had their own rules and laws, and thought they were right. Now, with Jesus, with Jesus healing, preaching, and teaching, crowds kept following him and, and learned the truth about things. This made the Pharisees angry. They hated Jesus more than his word. They weren't, didn't care a whole lot about, they weren't as concerned about the healing he did, they hated the man. They had already decided they hated the man, and no matter what he did, it was in their eyes was going to be wrong. And you know, sometimes we, in, in our life, we've already decided we don't like a certain person, and no matter what they do, we ain't going to like it. We ain't going to be satisfied with it. We'll say, well, sometimes, and it's amazing at how sometimes, the attitude that some of us have when we come into God's house. We don't have no respect for for this God's house or God's people. And it's just it's just kind of sad. Sometimes they grumble the whole time, cell phone going off, they don't like this one or that one. They're holding grudges and talking, even doing prayer, they're talking. We just don't reverence the house of God like we should. And sometimes you may not like that person, but if God had put them in a position, then you must at least respect that position. And we, if you listen close enough, sometimes uh, uh, the message, if you don't like the messenger, just, just think about the message and see what you get out of there. Because sometimes you never know who God is using to help you out. You know who God is using that day to bring a message to to the congregation. But when you go in there with an attitude, you've already decided that you ain't going to get nothing out of it because you don't like the person that gives it, so you ain't going to listen. You're going to tune them out or whatever. Well, if you're going to be that way, you, you just may well stay home. And then another thing, some of the language that some church folks use, it's it's like borderline, borderline to blasphemy. And, and sometimes you, you can't believe that this church person has said what they said. 
And, and you know, and when we, but when we when we come to Christ, we're supposed to we're a new creation. I said old things are passed away. Now we don't get right overnight. It's a process, and it takes us some time. And we may slip here and slip there. But when you just all you do, you come in and you have the baptism, and you have the right hand of fellowship or whatever, and, and you go right back and can take up from where you were, business as usual. No, it ain't business as usual. It's, you, it's new business. You're in new business now. And sometimes we need to be asking God, God help us out, because we need to watch what we say, how and how we say, and sometimes to whom we say. And we, as, as children of God, We've got to have God's help. And, and, and it says in Proverbs, it says, keep the heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. And it says, above all else, guard your affections, for they influence everything else in your life. Everything like fear, hatred, love, obedience, and whatever. But we as the children of God, we have got to come. <laughs> we got to come to a real realization that, hey, that's not right. For, and that's not right. Now, I used to do that or say that before, but now I'm a child of God. I'm in God's family now, and, and I, I, I can't do this. you got to be convinced your own self. you got you got to realize, I'm wrong. I'm wrong, and this will not work. And see, these Pharisees, they had their own law. They had their own little stuff, and they thought everybody should be that way. They had their people to, they, to cast out demons. But when Jesus come along, they couldn't, they couldn't handle that. That was not on competition. Jesus was in the way. This crowd started following Jesus and learning the truth about things, how his healing power coming from the Lord. And it's like, oh, no. He was competition for them, so they didn't want to get better. Everything they could think of, they wanted to make sure that they could hold it against it. And sometimes we, we as church folks, we decide that, well, I don't like them, so I ain't going to listen to them. I'm not going to clap my hands, uh, sing along with the choir. I'm not going to give the deacon an amen when he prays. I'm not going to do... I'm not going to support when the pastor uh, preach. I ain't going to say no amen or clap my hand or nothing. Well, you've already made up your mind. Why did you even come? We've got some stuff. All of us got some stuff with us. But some of us got some real stuff. And we need to think about that. We need to think about the fact that while I'm, while I'm in my attitude, God is still looking at me. Mm -hmm. he has, he's put me in this position. He expecting some things out of me. We got responsibility, good, great responsibility as Christians. And we don't want to be like the Pharisees. The Pharisees thought no matter what they did, it was all right. It, it was all right because they thought they was above everybody else. And we have to be careful that we don't get into that, kind, that same kind of attitude because God is looking at everything. You know, what goes around, they say, come around. But as the old folks used to say, it's coming up again. We don't have to answer for a lot of things. And we could be so much farther up the road if we could just get on one accord. And maybe, you know, um, you know, it's difficult sometimes to love everybody. But it's possible to treat others in a loving way as Jesus worked in and through us. God will supply the wisdom and the ability to do as we seek to live as his people. We, oh, we can't do a lot of things on our own. We can't keep ourselves, but God can, and he will. We, we ask him, Lord, keep me. I, I know I've got some fault. I know this and I know that. But the thing about it, you know everything about the Lord. You know where I come from, you know where I am now, and you know where I'm going to be in the future. So you ask the Lord, Lord, please help me. Because we need to, uh, <clears throat> sometimes we just need to hold the tongue and, and think about 
and, and think about how we're talking to each other. And we should be there for, for each other. Whether we really like that person, particular person or not, you may be surprised that that person may turn out to be one you can really get along with, you can really work with, and, and, and you know, and you can be the two people that God wants you to be. He wants us to be the light of the world. He wants us to look out for each other. He wants our light to shine. We sing that little song, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Well, if you if, if you got your light shining, you know, you're a child of God, then you're the light of the world. Now, if you're the light of the world, you can't afford to have a power outage because so many people may be looking, using your light to get around in this dark world. So you can't afford to have a power outage. You have to think about that. We're the light of the world. And the Pharisees were just, you know, they, they just wouldn't give Jesus credit for nothing. They just, they just did everything they could against him sometimes. And then he healed one person, he healed a man with, when they ate the grains, they healed a man with a rubber hand. And you might would have thought, you know, Jesus was done then. They, they, they were harassing him. He just went right on in the temple, healed a man with a rubber hand. He just kept right on going. God is in charge of everything. No matter how we do it, what we think, he is still in charge. It sometimes mm -hmm. it doesn't look like it with the things going on in the world, but he didn't say we would understand all that. He said we understand it by and by. He didn't say it right now. So therefore therefore we got we got to we got to just keep on. We don't know what lies ahead. But you know God knows tomorrow. God holds tomorrow. And he's going to keep us. And, and he's going to guide us in the way that he wants us to go or the way, whatever is best for us. He, but, we can't, we, but we got responsibility. It is time. It is just time for us to change. Some of us got to change course. You just don't do like you did before. You have to watch the tone because you say something you shouldn't say. Everybody is listening at you. If you say one thing and then they see you do another or act another way, it's like it's confusing to some folks and it's a turn off to others. I can't imagine what it's like to God. It must hurt him. So when we think about who we belong, who we are, we belong to God. These, these Pharisees thought it was all about them. They, they kind of made the laws, and they had their own people to cast out demons. They had people that was trained to cast out. And, and but they thought, when Jesus come along, Jesus cast out and restored people. And the first thing they would say, uh oh, he must be, that must be about the effort He's working for the devil. They couldn't give him credit, and, and they couldn't give God credit. They couldn't give the Holy Spirit credit. And, and so they just, uh-uh. They, they wouldn't have it. They were thinking a way to get rid of him. They wanted to go in on and get rid of Jesus and get him out of the way, and then they could, wouldn't have that competition. But God did not see it that way. God did not let it work that way. Amen. And he wants us to be, he wants us to lay aside those weights and sin that's so easy to be set up. Things that we've been holding on to for a while, that they can cause us not to run this race like we should. We can, mm -hmm. we need to walk all that stuff because as we get closer to home, the road gets a little bit harder. So mm -hmm. we, we can't afford to have no waste or nothing else to weigh us down. We just got to empty. We just got to lay aside all these weights. We got to take all this stuff. And we, we, we got to get rid of old grudges and stuff. Maybe you and I didn't get along five years ago, but by now that stuff should be settled. So I'm saying that we have got to come together and get on one accord because we got the power. God will give us power if we can just get together. Well, maybe we don't love each other, but we can learn to get along with each other. Mm -hmm. I may not like your ways, 
but I can learn to get along your ways to let you learn to get along with mine. Mm -hmm. All of us got something that we need to improve on. No mm -hmm. matter what no matter what it is, we just you know, when you really look at it and all that you think you know and you really when you really sit down and look at it, you really don't know nothing. That's okay. right. It's kind of like the song they sing at weddings. You've only just begun. Mm -hmm. so, so we have to, we got a lot that we can do. We don't want to be like the Pharisees. Now, like you said, and they had no idea Jesus was going to come back and use that against them. He said, well, your folks cast out then. How do your folks cast out then? Who do they to work for? And, and you know, it, it caught them. And that made them even mad. They did not like Jesus because Jesus was telling them, and Jesus was exposing them. That's the thing. God can look in the heart of all of us. And he was looking in the heart of the Pharisee, and it's like, uh, well, who do you, who do your people use? Who do your people cast out demons by? Uh, 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 I'm sure they said, uh, well, uh, uh, and, and they had to, you know, it backed them up in a corner. That made them even mad. And, and it was no problem for Jesus because he was getting his power from on high. He mm -hmm. went in the devil. He went in the devil's camp, and he he got victory. He, mm -hmm. he brought out one the devil had bound and and, and uh, demon possessed, blind, and dumb, and he brought him out whole. Gave him victory. Jesus got victory, and Satan couldn't do nothing but yeah, man. That's a good part. He could not do nothing but. When we look to our Father, we talk to the Lord, and then God said, <clears throat> I, I, I got it. I got it. The, the devil can't, he can't do nothing about it. God said, you, just, you sit still. I got this. And that's the good thing about knowing the Lord. But you see, if we don't stay close to God, don't keep that connection going then, uh, you know, we lose our power. Mm -hmm. and, and when we lose our connection with God, we really don't have anywhere to turn. We are out there, we hold them up for anybody that comes by to tell us something. But we stay connected with God. And, and when we stay connected with God, we'll stay connected with the, with the believers. Believers will stay connected. But believers mm -hmm. stay connected, and then they can help out in the community, wherever they go. They can let that light shine. And they would, God would be there when we do what God would do. He would do what he said he would do. And, and we have to, there's just so much left for us to do. We will work with the song, say, until Jesus comes. We just keep on working. It will be one thing today and it will be another thing tomorrow. But it will always be something. That's so, right. So what we do, you know, we just look to Jesus and we just say, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for where you brought us from. We've come a long way, leaning on you. And so God, God will keep us. We are God's servant. And, and so what we have to do, we have to keep looking to Jesus. And, and we have to, we have responsibility. We can't do like we did before. We, we got to, we just got to realize that, you know, God is the almighty God. And we, you know, if we are God's children, then we need to act like God's children. All right. All, not sometimes, but all the time. Okay. And so we act like God's children. We do like God's children supposed to do. And and we got to lay aside some of this old stuff, the you know, the old grudges, the old things and things that people did to you or said about you or whatever uh, two, three years ago or maybe 50 years ago. We got to let it go because we got a race to run. And, and we running by faith. Mm -hmm. And see, following Jesus, following Jesus is not an easy road, but it's the only road worth following. Mm -hmm. Are there any comments? 
Yes, ma'am. I just want to say thank you for that. I also want to thank God for letting you be able to, to see us this morning. And I just want to say, like you say, we need to put all that evil and filth of lucas behind us. And God will appreciate if we all get on one accord. Don't matter how much I dislike somebody, don't like their way, at the end of the day, God said, love one another as I have loved you. That's right. That's right. You want, you want exactly the best thing in the world, but look what, he still loves you. He still loves you. And I mm-hmm. thank him for it. That's right. He thanked me. And he, he loved me in my badness, and he loved me in my, and my goodness. And that's what I think. I got to give him all the credit, because he is everything to me. That's right. Cross died for Are there any other comments? Yes, good morning. Um, now, that was a message for, uh, uh, I need to listen to this message every day because it's some of the lines, uh, along the lines that um, that I have uh, been going through, uh, well, just experiencing and whatever, um, for quite some time. Uh, the message, wow. Need to be played every Sunday. Uh, you know, it's like the song say, every round get higher and higher. And and, and, and and every Sunday you get good and gooder. But for me, this is the this is the top message right here. You cover a whole lot of ground. Whole lot of ground. And I wanna say I ain't mad with nobody. I don't care how folk treat me. And um I'm not gonna be mad. I'm gonna I I I I, I remember I used to um as I travel I listen to gospel music, sometimes I listen to jazz, but when I listen to gospel and uh preachers certain preachers come on the radio and I used to turn the channel. I didn't want to hear what they had to say because I know they got messed with them. But everybody got something that we can that we can um use. So I had to change that. Uh same thing about going inside the church. Um, I didn't want to hear some folk, but everybody got something. I hope they got something that I can use. But this was just a powerful message. Again, I, Lord have mercy. I'm just fired up. Get ready to get out of here and go to a men's day, but I'm so fired up now. I don't even want to leave home. I mean, because this, this, this was a powerful message. Uh, this is like uh, uh, Reverend Eric uh, Barnes say, uh, uh, this is good teaching and preaching. Lord have mercy, you covered it. I, I I am just so excited. I mean, it, you just don't know that message does something for me, and 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 um, I know a lot of times I don't say nothing, or when I do, and because I don't, when I hear other folk or whatever, hey, I, I got I get something out of the message, but it might not be as strong as this is. I tell you, I'm just so excited. Um, I I mean, Lord have mercy, this one no message that you that you really can't add to. Or take away, and that's my opinion. Because sometimes when you add to and take away, you you take away from the message. And 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 Lord have mercy. I I, I don't even like to call in because I, I I don't even like people to. The last thing people hear, that if that's the last thing they hear is me, then they might forget the message. But I just got to call in and 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 give you uh, uh um your props because I tell you that's a powerful. It was that was a powerful message. Thank you. Well, Brother Dancy uh, and, and others, you know, I, I, I try to, I'm talking about when I see some of the things I do and I think, and I see the way some other folks do and think, all of us got some improvement to do. Amen. Amen. I know I do. And you know, talking about power and demonstration, when some folks put people in some spots or some position, they think they have all the power that they need to do what they want to do, but you know, God gives us the fit to look at different things, how you how you work out with your power. But sometimes, like me, I try to be, just be myself with everything I do. Well, I, 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 I don't have no power for nothing because Jesus got all the power. I just kind of follow the little direction. I'm just somebody God is using to do His work. Yes, and the song said, I'm just a nobody. Are there any other comments? Yes, I got one last comment. I just want to say, um, some folk say God did it. Yeah, God did it. But God is working through you. And people got to understand he works through us. 
Yes, he did it. Amen. But Lord have mercy, he's working to you, and I appreciate you. We got to live so he can use us. That's right. That's right. Amen. Is there another comment? Yes, ma'am. I just want to thank God for you and you putting that word out there this morning. So you, you did it. Thank you, Jesus. And I really enjoyed the lesson. Thank you, Mother Barnes. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Basin. I'm so glad that we all enjoying we're all enjoying this lesson together because we're all on this journey together trying to make it amen so, so this is our Sunday school lesson together all of us amen are, are there any other comments